Hello and welcome to the 2024 Beginner Guide for Formula Apex. In this video, I'll be covering all the basics that you need to know if you're new to Formula Apex. So to begin, you're gonna have to go to the dealership. The dealership is where you can buy all the cars in the game. You must buy a car before you can drive it out of track. So let's take a quick look at these cars. So first, obviously, we have the 2024 cars. So when you press select, you are able to choose a livery. Obviously, each livery is sold separately, which means if you want a car, you have to buy it. However, of course, you are given a choice of three cars. You have the Santon Motorsport car, the EX Motorsport, the Alton, and the Agile Energy. So these four cars are given to you for free. So after choosing your car, you could see that this car has different stats and stuff. Obviously, you can upgrade these cars and make them faster. So you just press upgrade, and you have the choice to upgrade the air of the car, the engine of the car, and the chassis of the car. Some of these upgrades can actually physically change the car. So just as an obvious example, let's do the rear wing. As you can see, the rear wing looks like this. And when we press purchase, you could see that the wing was slightly changed. Some upgrades, however, don't visibly show, but they do change the performance of the car. So when I press, for example, here it showed that it would reduce the weight of the car. Of course, purchasing those upgrades will only apply to this car. Every single car has to be upgraded separately. Some teams are fictional, like these four, and some of the others are real life teams. For example, the Williams. This is not the only car you can buy though. The options of cars you can buy is the following, the 2021 cars, the 2016 cars, the 2010 cars, the 2007 cars, 2003 cars, 1992 cars, the Arrow car, and the Formula B car. So the difference is when buying these cars, if you buy the car, you own all the liveries with it and the performance between liveries does not change. Each of these cars have their own price tag. For example, this one is seven million pounds. However, some other cars actually cost Robux to buy. For example, the Arrow car is 350 Robux. That's about it for the dealership. Before we go into the practice mode, let's take a look at the other options we have over here. If we press store, this is where you can buy things with Robux. These are the free cars you can buy as a Game Pass. Obviously, the Formula B being the latest new Game Pass that has been added to the game. And then you can see here we have helmets and poses. If you press helmets, this is where you can buy some helmets. Most of these helmets can be bought with the in-game currency of Project Apex Pounds. However, these special helmets here all cost 35 Robux. The poses is just a little funny thing that shows up when you win a race or something like that. You'll be able to see your character doing a funny pose. There's two option poses for now, one being free and one costing 5,000 pounds. And last but not least, you can buy some Project Apex Pounds. Each of them have a different price, but to give you an idea, 500,000 pounds is 140 Robux. The next tab is called Stats. Stats is where you can see all the data about yourself. The total apps, corner cuts, race starts, race wins, and the, your account balance, which can be previewed right on this part of the screen. Then we have servers. Servers is where you can just click and join. Obviously, you have the regions over here of where the servers are located. You can either go to a random race mode or a random practice mode. However, a special feature you can do over here is if your friend is online, just type their username over here and you'll automatically join the server they're in no matter the track. And this tab is just the credits showing the people who have participated in making this beautiful game. So we're gonna take a look at practice mode. So when you press practice mode, as you can see, you have a choice of a few tracks, Hockenheim, Mexico, Magnico, Saitama, Indianapolis, Silverstone, Czechia, Winford, Winter Park, Baku, Zandvoort, and Turkey. Most of these tracks you will probably recognize from real life, but a few of these are actually fictional. For this video, we're gonna go to Hockenheim. All right, and here we are in the main game. So as you can see, we've got some players already practicing over here. We've got the timer. This timer usually resets every time it's finished. 
so you don't need to worry too much about that. So you can see we've got a few options of what we can do. We'll check out the drive last, but obviously this main menu just takes you back to the main menu. Then we have the settings. The settings is where you can you know, mess around with some stuff, obviously in the settings, whether it is general stuff, like if you want to, uh, if you want to see your speed unit, racing line, racing line width and stuff like that, these are just general things. Then we have the keyboard. So if you're using a keyboard, this is where you can change some stuff around if you prefer a different layout. Then we have a controller for you controller players. You can, if there's is a, another control layout you prefer using, you can actually change it over here. I recommend the normal settings, they're just fine. Graphics, obviously, if you have a, a computer with slightly lower performance, you can actually mess around with this and find something that works for you. For those who are uh, playing this game on mobile if you go to control mode you now have the new slider option that you can use and you can also mess around with the dead zones to help you get the perfect control after this we have helmet select so helmet select is exactly what you think it was we were here just earlier then we go to something that is quite important these are the camera settings the camera settings is where you can change the field of view, the horizontal offset, the vertical offset, and the camera angle of each angle of each car. So you have the chase camera, cockpit cam, nose cam, nose cam, T cam, TV pod. Camera settings are pretty basic to work with. Obviously, I have made a video that you can check out right over here. If you want to learn just a little bit more about these camera angles and settings, it is a bit old, but it is still relevant. Then, of course, we have the spectate option. The spectate option is basically watching other people have skill issues, unlike this guy who's crossing the line. And if you want to change the player you're spectating, you can use the keys on your keyboard to switch to a driver. You can also switch to another camera angle. So we have the T cam for this guy who has had a massive skill issue. And the most important option is the drive option. So obviously pressing drive. And as you can see, this is where you can select your car. Obviously, I have every single car in the game, the try hard I am. Upon uh, selecting the car that you like, you have all the team options here available. However, you can only choose the cars that you own. I do not own every single 2024 car, therefore I am unable to drive them. However, I do have the Red Bull. So obviously you can choose the car number, so either Max Verstappen or Sergio Perez. Let's go Max Verstappen. All you gotta do is click spawn and you'll be spawned into a random garage. Here we are, we are spawning. We're on the mediums. However, you can choose your compound of tire. And obviously for, for the beginners, it tells you which one is the fastest and which one is the most durable soft mediums and hearts. Uh, recently, the tires have been changed around and stuff, but for practice mode for doing hot laps, I always recommend using the soft compound of tires, the red wall tires, here they are. So obviously uh, it's pretty, uh, practice mode is very simple. You just do as many laps as you like. All you gotta do is go out of the garage. Uh, uh, what you need to know though, is that every time this time up here resets, the uh, all the lap times get cleared and I guess if you want to show off to other, to other players, you got to set those laps again. Another thing is that when you press R, this is how you use the mouse uh, controls. Press the left click to accelerate, the right click to brake, and you, you, you move the mouse to turn to the direction you want to go. This control scheme is combined with the keyboard. In terms of keyboard, in general, the controls are this. WASD is to move the car, as, as being the brakes, the DRS is the shift, and G is to use the ERS. Think of ERS as an electric nitro boost that recharges every time you brake. Another cool feature about this game is if you press one, you can see the tire wear right over here and how your tires are doing. The tires do degrade eventually, and when your tire wear is too low, you can just drive into the pits and choose the tire and change it to the tire you want to use. For those who want to use manual controls on your keyboard, just press M and then you can use, well, in my case, it's Q and U. When I press Q, I gear up. And when I press U, it gears down just like so. And then pressing M again takes you back to the automatic settings. I, in general, for beginners, I highly recommend just using the automatic transmission. In terms of setting laps, every time you cross the line, your timer will reset. And when you cross the line again to complete your lap, you'll get your lap time. 
your best lap time will be shown here. Delta compares time from the lap you're do currently doing and the previous lap, and then sector one, sector two, and sector three is basically the track is split into three, and every sector has a different time. And the, if you do a fastest time in a sector, it will be purple. If it's your personal best, it will be green. If you do not improve your time in a sector, it will be yellow. If you invalidated the lap on a sector, it will be red. Your fastest lap is also saved on the leaderboard right over here and is compared with other players. The fastest player is put in position number one and then number two, number three, and so on and so forth. Another cool feature, if you press L, you can see everybody's live lap time. Obviously, it only shows one person at the moment because the timer has just reset. But to give an idea, it will show um, everybody's um, sector times and whether it's the fastest, whether they're improving or whether they're not improving or whether they invalidated. So it basically shows everyone's information and what they're doing. It will also show their best lap over here and it will show their last lap. Basically, the previous lap that they did, what time did they get so it gives a lot of information for leaks and stuff like that all right the next thing i like to talk about is money how do you earn money in the game we know what money is for it's to buy and upgrade the cars well buying apex currency isn't the only way to earn the currency every time you do a lap you earn money for it However, there are different amounts of how money is earned. In general, every invalidated lap will only give you 5,000 pounds. You receive money depending on how fast your lap was. So, for example, a slow but decent uh, uninv uh, uninvalidated lap in this car will give you 25,000 pounds on this track. If you set a very fast lap, then the game will give you £60,000 on this track. The amount of money you earn is different. Every single track have a different amount. The only thing that does not change is invalidated laps. Invalidated laps will always give you £5,000. Every car and every track is different. For example, a fast lap for a 90s car in Hockenheim will give you £100,000. However, this 2024 car will only give you £60,000 in comparison. So basically, every track is different in terms of how much money you earn. And that's basically everything about practice mode. Now, let's go into the race mode. All right, so here we are in race mode. So all you gotta do is press drive. And as you can see, you will be brought into this menu selection. So here is where you can vote the track. So for example, I'll pick Silverstone and then you can pick the lap number. In this case, let's just pick three laps. All right, so after this, well, normally there's a part where you can choose your objectives and stuff, which gives you extra money, but for some reason it didn't appear. This is where you can pick a car. You can pick any car that you own in the game. So for example, I'll choose my Red Bull. And after choosing the car and the track is fully loaded, you'll be taken here where obviously you can pick your tires and then you have five minutes to set the fastest lap that you can. The person who sets the fastest lap will be on pole position, aka first place, and everyone else will be behind him in their respective positions. So in qualifying, you are paid just like you are in practice mode for every lap that you do. In race mode, you get half of the money each lap however at the end of the race depending on your position you are given an amount of prize money first place obviously giving the most money and on top of that money you also get the bonus money if you manage to achieve the goal that you chose before the race so as soon as qualifying is over, the leaderboard will be shown right over here. In this case, this guy over here is in pole position and I've been placed in P8. So even if you don't set a lap, you will be able to participate in the race, but you'll be given a random position. Then with the car that you chose in qualifying, you'll be taken to this race mode where you'll have to choose which compound you wanna drive with. I'm gonna choose soft, for this race, but obviously you can choose any compound of tire. 
and then as soon as you're here the five lights will go your um, the lap times are right over here so this is how many laps you have to do and when the lights go out it's lights out and away we go so obviously it's five laps of racing the leaderboard kind of update so you get a good idea of everyone is but uh vision lag is a bit of an issue here so you might think you're in the lead but you might you're, you're probably in another position but in this case i'm in p3 because i can tell the lead in, in general the leaderboard will always tell you the right position that you're in it does take a little bit of time to update though so that is something you have to pay attention to another thing is if you crash out this race and um, when i mean crashing out breaking your tire or something like that that's it, you are totally out of the race and you, you are able to join but as a ghost and you probably aren't part of the race anymore. Another thing you need to take note of is the penalty system. That's right, you can't just get away with cutting corners and trying to win this race. So, what? how does it work? It's actually quite simple. If I go over the um, track limit, so let's just go wide into Stowe, I get a warning. I mean, I already had a warning earlier. But what happens if I get three warnings? Good question. You get a penalty. A penalty which slows you down dramatically and lets people get ahead of you. So getting these warnings is not something you want to do. It's something you want to avoid. It also invalidates your lap, obviously. And that's everything you need to know about Formula Apex. These are the basics. Obviously, I have a lot more videos which you can watch, which have even more tips and could be useful for you. But this video is targeted towards beginners, so I really hope it has helped you and perhaps uh, made you want to try Formula Apex for yourself. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any Formula Apex questions and stuff. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Alright, if you have enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe. Consider becoming a YouTube member or sending super thanks to support the channel. And thank you to Kimmy, Creeperman and Mr. Dillophosaurus for being ultimate members.